Now, the last matchup I'll recap on today's podcast, the Saints against the Bucks. And don't worry, the missing recaps, including the Chargers, Chargers against the Bengals, the Steelers against the Giants, the Broncos against the Titans, the Cowboys against the Rams, the Panthers against the Raiders, and the Browns against the Ravens, along with the Seahawks against the Falcons, will all be out by Wednesday night throughout the day tomorrow. I can only watch and take notes on so many games in a two-day stretch. I'll try my best to fit more in on next Tuesday's podcast. And also, don't forget to catch my week two score predictions on this upcoming Thursday's podcast. But the team I'll recap today, the last team, are the Saints and the Bucks. The Saints look like the Saints in week one, besting a division rival in the Bucks, 34-23. to The Saints struggled offensively at times with a fair amount of three and outs to account for. And quite honestly, the Saints didn't win as comfortably as the score implies. Take away a 4th and 2 neutral zone and fraction penalty on the Bucks' defense, and this game stands at 27-23, a bit less comfortable when playing Tom Brady. But overall, the Saints played a much more sound game than that of the Bucks, especially when it came to penalties and turnovers. Drew Brees played somewhat well with just 160 yards and 2 touchdowns, and again, the Saints' offense struggled at times, putting up just 21 points overall if you take away a 4th and 2 penalty against the Bucks. Now, I'm not saying the Saints don't deserve credit for that drive, but what I am saying is that the offense needed a bit of luck to win this game, as Brady and the Bucks were more productive overall outside of the two picks thrown by Brady. The Saints' defensive turnovers are what helped the Saints best the Bucks on Sunday, along with the Saints' pair of strong special teams plays, including a blocked punt and a muffed return by the Bucks on a kickoff. Kamara was arguably the best player on the Saints' offense on Sunday, putting up two total touchdowns on the day. Michael Thomas underwhelmed, putting up just three catches for 17 yards, and not to mention Thomas is expected to miss a few weeks with a high ankle sprain. But overall, I'd say the Saints played worse than expected offensively and played average on defense in terms of shortening production by the Bucks' offense. But trust me, they won that turnover game well. As for the Bucks, well... As I said before, the Bucks' offense simply shot themselves in the foot multiple times. The two interceptions from Brady and the special teams flukes along with the insane amount of penalties showed us everything that's different between the Patriots and the Bucks for Tom Brady. But for the romanticizing of football's sake, let's give Brady a little bit of a pass on week one. I'm not saying that the interceptions weren't bad. They were bad, they were there. Brady made some clear mistakes there. But he also threw for two touchdowns, and he also ran for one. And it's clear that there were communication issues on the first interception. And the Bucks had had a drastically shortened offseason to build chemistry with Brady. Not to mention, the Bucks played the hardest game of their schedule in Week 1. So if you take that and think, okay, well, if this is the hardest game of the Bucks' schedule, they should play better in every other game this season. So if this is the worst Brady will play all year, this game against the Saints... Considering this is the hardest challenge he'll face all year, I'd be happy with that as a Bucks fan. Three total touchdowns and 239 yards to two picks is not a terrible season low performance for Brady. And for history's sake, let's take a look at how Brady has done in the past season openers. Do you guys remember 2018, the year the Patriots started out 1-2 and two and losing to the Jags and the Lions with Brady throwing just 133 yards and a touchdown and a pick against the Lions? That seemed like a washed up quarterback to me. But guess what? That offense went on to put over 40 on the Chargers and best the Mahomes-led Chiefs en route to a Super Bowl win against the Rams or the famous on to Cincinnati game in which Brady was evaluated as a possible washed-up quarterback and many were calling for him to be benched. Now, I'm not trying to give Brady a free pass here, but what I am trying to say is that this has happened before. So let's give it another week or two before we ring the bell on Brady after a week one game with a brand new team against the hardest team on their schedule.